Let's debunk the hoax. Today we're going to tell you about what they won't tell you about financial planning. And this is where you have to understand the difference between average and actual rate of return, pre-tax, post-tax accounts, and why it's important to make sure all of your financial professionals are on the same page for your benefit. All right, folks, so check this. According to The Hill, 37% of Americans retire with no savings. Now, there's a lot of reason why that's going to happen. Typically, it does come down, at least in my opinion, to mindset when it comes to money, whether you think you deserve it or not, or whether you want to do proper planning or not. But there's a level of discipline that's part of that package. And I think that what I like to talk about is not only statistics that are out there, but also how to make sure that you're not falling victim to what those 37% of people are doing right now. Medium retirement savings in the U.S. by age, according to a survey by Trans of America Center for Retirement. So check this out. If you're in your 20s, the average number is 16,000, 30s, 45,000, 40s, 63,000, 50s, 117,000, 60s, 172,000. So here's the key. For folks that are in their 20s, they're always going to be the thing that says, I have more time, Right. If you're in your 30s, you're probably starting a family and you're starting to think a little bit more about it. 40s, you're you're done making mistakes that you made in your 30s and now you're starting to put more and more away, which represents itself in the 50s into the 60s. But remember, it comes down to understanding what you could do today. What are the things you could do today that are different than what you've been doing to get you where you want to go? And I'm always going to say this, who do you surround yourself with? Are you investing in the real estate between your ears when it comes to your money, time, freedom? Do you have a very good relationship with money when it comes to wounds? And do you understand that it's okay if you made mistakes in the past, not to chase a rate of return, but to really put yourself in a spiritual mindset when it comes to money through proper savings? So here's why so many people do not build any short-term savings. You're always going to have the person, based on what they read, who they hang out with, what their thoughts are that, hey, the world's not going to be here next year. It doesn't matter anyway. I want to go get mine today and have fun. That person, typically, we could say that they're scared for the future. The truth is, it's really a selfish impulse that they just want to spend their money now and stay in that space. Number two is they overuse their retirement plans. What do I mean? Listen, I know that if you're saying, I love putting as much money as I can into a retirement plan, I'm not here to say don't do it. But what I am going to say is this. Going up to the match and then whatever's past the match, in my mind, would be much more efficient if you put that somewhere else as long as you're staying on the retirement path, except now you're going to create a much more liquid bucket. So from where I'm coming from, I think it's important to understand that overuse of retirement plans means that you're putting all your money away until 59 and a half, which means it's in jail. So you want to make sure you create another liquid bucket that you could use now for leverage, liquidity, and control and put into other opportunities. And then we have number three, which is running out of money. So what does that mean? You know, Mary and Joe Jenkins, they have a fixed salary, right? And because of lifestyle and because of fake confusion and because of just lack of any kind of discipline, all of a sudden, what used to run out of money on the 29th is now running out on the 20th because interest rates are higher, cost of goods for food and gas is more, and now all of a sudden, they can't even keep up with the month, never mind retirement planning, never mind money mindset. And when people run out of money too soon, they begin to chase and make irrational decisions. Number four is they lack coordination towards a goal. So remember, whenever you want to achieve something, you want to have a goal with deadlines. Those deadlines give you the ability to to really celebrate successes along the way. So if I'm 30 and my goal is to retire with $2 million when I'm 59 and a half, how are you going to celebrate along the way? How are you going to measure that? What does that look like? What is your purpose? What is your purpose when it comes to waking up every day that's going to make you cry, your why, to put you in a position to really save, not only just for retirement, but also that you want to be able to create those buckets that give you the ability to turbocharge your retirement as well. Number five, Lauren Hill said it best when she said, how are you going to win if you're not right within? And that's the loss of financial control. Whether one spouse is addicted to credit cards or another spouse is addicted to spend the money, if there's not clear communication, and if you're not married, if there's not a clear understanding of who you are, what your relationship with money looks like, what your goals and objectives are, the loss of financial control can happen real fast. One bad investment decision, uh, one one bad relationship that comes into play, and now all of a sudden you're chasing a rate of return and you're putting yourself in a position where you're running east looking for a sunset. So what, do I, what am I saying? What is your relationship with money? Have you confronted your fears about money? 
Do you know what your wealth wounds are? What is your mindset? And yes, you deserve to not only make money, but to keep money to turbocharge your net worth. So, you know, we know that retirement's goal is age 59 and a half or age 65, which is the NRA, the normal retirement age. The real question is, and we always hear this from the College of Financial Planning, you're going to need income for 20 to 30 years, right? My question is, wait a second, what does that income look like? Is it tax-free? Is it taxable? Am I facing headwinds or do I have a tailwind? And think of it like this. If you're coming down a mountain, you don't want to go too fast, right? But you want to make sure that you're not exerting a lot of energy when it comes to that money and... Most importantly, you don't want to run out of money in year 26 on a 27, 28, 29 year game plan. So always remember that if you're subjecting yourself, hey, I need money for 20 or 30 years. No, you need money all the time, no matter what. And you're coming down the mountain with no friction. So according to Vanguard, I'm going to throw statistics out right now are balances that are average balances in 401ks. And if the world just existed on what I'm about to talk about, then the world's in trouble. So, so I want to talk about these balances and at the same time, be able to talk to the person that's watching this right now that does have a 401k but also has other investments that are out there making money for them. So check this, from age 55 to 64, the average, according to Vanguard, 401k balance is $198,968. Now fast forwarding to 65 plus, the number goes down a little bit, that's $185,858. What's my point here? If this was just what the world looked like, the world would be in trouble. Now, if I was to break down 185000 we talked about retirement for 25 years. I want you to think about what I'm going to say right now. If everything was in the 401k, there was no other alternative investments, there was no other pension plan, there was no other real estate, there was no other money coming in, there was no Social Security, that $185,000 divided by 25 years would equal $7,432.32. That is frightening, folks. And that's what we want to dig into right now. One of the things in the insurance space that you always hear people say, how much money do you need or how much death benefit do you need? First of all, we always want you to have the mindset of exceeding your needs and accomplishing your wants. So there's a general goal. When you go to the College of Financial Planning, they're going to tell you to replace your current income to the tune of about 70%. So if you're making 100 grand a year, you retire, they want to get into 70% as that number. We're saying, hell no. Hell to the no. That's not what we're saying right now. What we're talking about is how do you go down that mountain and not only replace your current income, but have that money not just taxable, but also tax-free along the way. We're going to give you some more scary statistics first, but I just want you to understand what this looks like. So here it is, folks. How much? If I'm making fifty grand a year, how much do I need? How much do I need to guarantee fifty thousand a year? And by the way, the fifty thousand must be tax-free. If this fifty is taxable, then I'm going to need more. But let's assume that this fifty thousand is tax-free for twenty-five years. I'm going to need guaranteed no matter what $1.25 million. But think, if I get 50000 at age 65, by the time I get to 75, that same 50 is going to be worth about 40. By the time I get to 85, that same 50 is going to be worth about 30 in buying power. So understand that it's not just the number, but it's an inflation increase tax free and also free of fees, lost opportunity cost. And it takes me into my next point. According to the New York Times, the average 64-year-old woman retiring in 2022 will spend $165,000 in health care alone during that 20, 25 years of retirement. The average man is going to spend about $150,000. So why don't we now take these numbers and plug it into the, what we've been talking about already, and then you're going to see that change is a must. Education in the real estate between your ears is necessary, and you want to make sure that you have the proper people in your life that can help you get over the top. Once again, the average 401k is $185,000 if you're after 65. Married couple, from 65 to 85, 65 to 90, they're going to spend about $315,000 in health care. If you look at that, we're at a deficit of $129,142. Scary. So once again, let's look at what you need. For retirement, you need that 50000 for 25 years, assuming it's tax-free. And in this calculation, we're not even adjusting for inflation. Uh, you need the 315000 healthcare, which brings us to $1.565 million. That's what somebody would need to get 50000 a year plus health care for 20 years, 25 years, assuming no inflation and assuming... Uh, that's tax-free. All right, folks, so I just talked about the financial planning hoax. Why is it a hoax? Because it's put in a cookie-cutter box. What do I mean by that? Okay, there's a lot of fears about money right now. There's a lot of uncertainty about money. There's a lot of things that people, because they're following what everyone else is doing, are putting themselves in a position to not just put money into qualified retirement plans, but they're not even saving the right amount of money 
because the cost of goods have gone higher, because of fruitless spending, because of emotional timidity, lack of education in the real estate between their ears when it comes to money, time, freedom. And we're here and we stand up for you. We're the voice for you. Get the right kind of financial planning advice when it comes to an overall sit down with one of the members here at Epic. They will take you with no obligation through the success process. Listen to what your questions are. Be able to put together a strategy that sits and fits with your core values, your goals and objectives. And I can't thank you enough for paying attention to the channel. Continue to follow and subscribe. And thank you so much for liking.